everybody. Part three, Ace, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. November 22nd, 114 p.m., Supreme Court of Judicature, Courtroom 2. Well, I understand you are the judicial assistant to the defense, but why this sudden ingress into my courtroom? Ha. A judicial assistant and a woman, no less. The rules state that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify. Yes, I fully understand. I ask only for five minutes of time. I have some vital evidence that I must hand over to the defense. Ha, ah, you're too late, little girl. This trial has already been concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moment more. But your excellency. I am most grateful. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Please simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something? Written in English? It's Jaziel Brett's research. The English woman's? After the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical facility and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So does that, this research, whatever it is, have something to do with the case? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh no, of course not. Special characteristics of curare and its effects on human subjects, interesting. Curare, what's that? I've never heard that word before. Time's up. Prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. There was too little time for me to read it in detail, but I've summarized what I could on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over. This is wonderful. Thank you. Jaziel's report has been entered into the court record. Goodbye then, and good luck. You have had long enough, counsel. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. I ask the prosecution and the defense now one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to pre present to the court? I presume not, but... The pros prosecution has made its case convincingly enough to already. Nothing more to add, Your Excellency. 
Ryunosuke, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yes, I know. Your Excellency, the defense has does have new evidence. Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Pratt? Yes, Your Excellency. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you would grace us with your presence a little longer. It's delightful. It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid it's not so very long until tea time. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realize it was phrased as a question. However, I must ask you to treat this as an order. I've said it many times before, but... The Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, counsel, what is the new evidence that demands the court's attention? A poison synopsis, a poison made from the bark of certain trees in the jungles of South Africa. The hunters of the region have used it since ancient times to incapacitate their prey. Effects, instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minutes and even in minute doses. Route of the entry, the above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound such as that inflicted by a blowpipe dart. Practical applications. Due to its ability to render the human body paralytic, it's believed that the toxin could have application as an anesthetic. However, a solution for the respiratory arrest caused as a result of full body paralysis must be found first. Our patients would die of suffocation. Miss Jazeel Brett, we understand you are studying under Dr. Wilson at Yumi University, doing research. Research by sheer coincidence, perhaps, into a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this, Council? A toxin known as Curare, Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. Attention! What? What complete and utter nonsense. Q Curare, you say? I've never heard of it. You wouldn't have done. What do you mean? I mean that you wouldn't have heard of Curare before for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country. It doesn't exist? Correct, which means no matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they'd never identify Curare. Why? 
because there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. Oh, hey, what's up, Marvelous? What's going on? Yeah, this is my first uh, Ace Attorney game. Order, order, order. Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by the visiting research student from England, Curera has long been used by the tribal's people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems that this is that it's reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To to lace their arrows? The report states that it is produced from the extract of a tree that grows deep in the Amazon Amazonian jungle. It is was first it was first brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with cure air suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brett? Trumpery. These aspirations are utterly trumpery. To start with, if the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain and the other diners would have surely noticed. Hmm, that's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I would have noticed a disturbance like that. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. According to this, however, it's the other way around. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence that curate was used. Explain yourself, counsel. The moment this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they were total in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible. Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. But with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects would go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediately paralysis immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, the paralysis is so severe it causes the muscles that control respiration to fail. Respiration? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. And all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. That's hideous. To the observer, it would look almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments would be a living hell. That, that is the true nature of this deadly curer poison. And you're suggesting that this bottle, Council, actually contains this terrifying, terrifying poison. Attention! This, this is all very convenient, isn't it? A hitherto unknown poison for which there is no means of testing. What a happy tale for the defense. Uh-huh, if I may. 
all these facts. You think you're so clever? It is you who must be taught. Of course. Dear lady. So this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? You steal another one's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. I am appalled. What a lonesome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime. That really is loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? Attention! Enough of this. I, for one, refuse to accept it. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan is is breaking the rules. Ha ha ha. What's so funny? Oh, excuse me, Your Excellency. Yes, Miss Brett? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Um, well, yes, I don't see. Um, why not? Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry? To an English woman such as myself, this whole affair is a farcical comedy. Your little police games and this foolish courtroom antics, it's laughable, really. Yeah, this is a lot of reading. Um, at the end of each part, you basically have to match the evidence with the certain lines that they say, or certain evidence, like the reading evidence. And like that's how you basically finish the part. Believe it or not, this game is 70 hours long. So I was just going to read the first case, like this is the third part, I was just going to read the first case and then do it on my own, because that's a lot of reading. But I'm getting bored of it all now, it's time for the games to end. Cheers. Wait, what are you doing? Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. Yeah, I laughed when I found out it was 70 hours. Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. So, no cure air? The bottle was clean. Is that what you were saying? Ha ha ha. You look quite incredulous, little boy, but of course, that's the simple truth. 
Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue, most kind. Grr. Thank you, waiter. Now then, your excellency. Ah, um, yes, Miss Brett. I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough time of my time for the furtherance of friendship between our countries. Ah, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified with all the assistance you have given. Oh, and Marvelous, there's 10 cases in the game. So each case is like seven hours long. It's a pretty long case. This doesn't make sense. There had to have been poison in that bottle. So how, how did she? How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? I don't understand it. Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little far eastern charade will make for interesting conversation at the next party I attend in London. There has to have been poison in that bottle, doesn't there? But there can't have been, because otherwise she would have keeled over dead. Come on, Ryan Nosuke. We all have the clues now. That bottle of water. Oh crap, I only have one try left. As I thought, there is no poison in that bottle. What? Why, Ryan Yusu? Isn't it obvious? If there was poison in there, she'd be dead by now. Sometimes your unadulterated naivety really astounds me. But sometimes it's in need of a good stain until it's as dark as Unifarm and the ways of the world. Oh, is that what this color is supposed to represent? That was a gil gilless ending to a promising line of... Ah, oh, I lost. Shoot. That was a gilless ending to a promising line of inquiry counsel for which you will be penalized. Shoot. Ah, oh, this whole trial is poisoned. That will do. I am now satisfied that no reasonable doubt remains in this matter. The defense has consistently failed to refute inadequately inad the assertions of the prosecution. I lost. You only get so many tries to get guess the evidence and all that. And I ran out of guesses. Accordingly, I hereby announce this court's final verdict. I find the defendant, Ryan Usuk Norhudu, guilty. Damn. Officer, restrain the accused and send the telegraphic communication to Great Britain without delay. The accused will not be granted the right to appeal. That is all. Adjourned. Oh, I can retry the scene. Okay. Thank God. I don't want to do the whole thing over, but now I actually know what I got to pick. There, there has to have been poison in that bottle, doesn't there? But if there can't have been, because otherwise she would have keeled over dead. Come on, Ryan Usyk, we all have the clues now. That bottle of water. Now I know it obviously contains poison. Oh, see you later, Marvelous. Thanks for stopping by. The culprit did put curare poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. 
The defense refuses to change its position. You're serious? Attention! Fool, are you blind? There is no possible way that that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw. Miss Brett drinking the water from it? That's right, which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe that complication can be explained. How exactly? I need to think through all the things that don't quite add up here, one by one. I'm sure the answer is in the evidence we have in the courtroom somewhere. It has to be. In the court record somewhere, it has to be. Very well. If the defense truly intends to assert this claim, then I must ask you to support the assertion with evidence. What explains how the witness was able to consume this supposedly poisoned bottle of water unscathed? Let's see here. label is written in a foreign language that I don't recognize. Do you know what it says, Kazuma? I think it says, I think it's French. This must be very expensive water. Yes, but what does it say? That's what I was asking. Then go to France and ask. You could just say that you don't know. Huh. So this So this carbonated water is the last drink Dr. Wilson ever had. It looks like there's a little left in the bottle, although it's just plain water now. You know, I've been sweating so much I've absolutely parched. I'll just have a sip of this to keep me going. No, Ryan no soup. you can't do that. For one thing, that's evidence. You can't go drinking evidence. Oh no, you're right. We don't know what might be inside, do we? You never cease to amaze me, Ryan Usuk, in more ways than one. I wonder, could there be anything in this water? What's the matter? You've gone quite quiet all of a sudden. I think I might just work something out. An interesting possibility. Poison made from bark of trees in the jungles of South Africa. The hunters of the region have used it since ancient times to incapacitate the prey. Effects, instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death, even in minute doses. Road of entry, the above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound, such as inflicted by a blowpipe dart. Due to its ability to render the body paralytic, it's believed that the toxin could have application as an anesthetic. However, a solution for the respiratory arrest caused as a result of a full body paralysis must be found first, or patients would die of suffocation.
What explains how the witness was able to consume the supposed poison water unscathed? just presented this evidence before, I think. Let me try it at least. Yes! The answer to this riddle is right here in Miss Brett's own research report. Attention! That's not a valid explanation. No? After all, we don't speak English. That report is utter gibberish. This impundent young scoundrel is trying to ridicule the court, Your Excellency. I'm not trying to ridicule anyone, honest. I'm just reading Sasato san's notes. I concur, this report is too extensive to be considered in its entirety by the court. You will direct us to the permanent section, or pertinent section, council. Which section of the report reveals the alleged answer to this riddle? Boy. not the first one. It's not the synops synopsis. Oh, it has to be... It has to be through a wound. You can't drink it, I don't think. So I think it's this one, Special Characteristics. We've been hearing a lot about this Curare Poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, Council. Well, it sounds as if Although the indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years to lace the heads of arrows that they shoot at whatever prey they are hunting. So we've been led to believe, yes. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please. But if they are used to... But if they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey of the hunters they are going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would, would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, Council. No, that would be madness. But I actually found the answer to that conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? I see, that makes sense. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret it, what's written it like this. When Curare enters the body through an open wound, it has a terrifying poisonous effect, however. 
When it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brett? You authored this research. You knew Curare's special characteristics. And you knew that you cannot make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Well, Ryanusuk, it turns out you're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? A lawyer? Objection! All this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But I fail to see how it possibly... So the ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish. Flaw? As even your brain has managed to deduce, cure air is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric success. Success. Oh, well. Uh, oh, yes, well, of course. Gas. Trick suckers? What are they? So, if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? Ah, that's right. Good gracious. That's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, no? Order, order in the court, order. The logic holds. If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are you trying to suggest? Yes, this cure air poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. What is this, welling up inside me? What is this welling up inside me? I've never felt like this before. It's sort of a conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. Objection! I don't think so, Miss Jazeel Brat. How dare you use that tone with me? You know very well that there is no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you. You must provide compelling evidence. As we now know that this poison is completely harmless when adjusted, why would Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the curare? Think because of the burn. Oh, his teeth! His teeth, he went to the dentist. Sk 
he got a tooth extracted. So he had a tooth out. Yes, it sounds like just before he went to lunch, Dr. Wilson had to have a decayed tooth removed. They probably used laughing gas so he couldn't feel anything. It's the latest medical advancement in the West. Yes, I've heard about people talking about this new idea of anesthetic. It's possible, it's impossible to imagine not being able to feel pain though. There's a cautionary note at the end of, from whoever wrote the, this. It says, no food or drink other than water three hours post procedure while anesthesia wears off. All right, so I gotta enter this. Take that! As Miss Brett so steadily or readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? The toxic effects of the curare are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it, it's completely harmless. But, what if there was a wound inside the mouth of a person drinking the poisoned water? Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have if you had just been to the dentist and had a tooth extracted, for example. Ah. Miss Brett, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you are well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah, so that's it. You used that knowledge to orchestrate this. He, he, he. Is, is she laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are also puerile. What do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. Oh, wow. She ran. Oh, wait. No, she didn't. You see, when I leave the vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. No, I mean, it could just slip. Oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. No! What is it? What just happened? It's the Englishwoman. She just smashed the bottle and the Supreme Court. Officer, what are you waiting for? Collect up as much of the water from that broken bottle as possible at once. You're wasting your time. This delightful carpet under my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you it will soak up the water beautifully. We have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. Ah ha 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 ha. How could you? You won't get away with this. You can thump the bench and shout as much as you'd like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle or not. You, and let us not forget, we still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Oh, of course, of course. Photographic print, I presume, dear lady. You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right, and really looking at this photograph, it's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me, so of course the only person who could have shot him from the front is the little schoolboy. 
Objection. No, you killed the victim that day using Curair. And then in order to frame Ryanosuke Norhudu for the first crime, or for the crime, you waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor. Before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with your own hidden job, or hidden gun. Then in the confusion that followed, all you had to do was turn the dead professor and his chair around. You see? You had every opportunity to commit this crime. Ha ha ha. What a wonderful imagination you have, young man. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly. And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to his chest. Delivered in cold blood by the accused, Ryanusuk Norhudu. Ugh. Hmm. This is unbelievable. How can I, how can this be happening? We had her, but now, is she really going to get away with it? The way she destroyed that evidence was obscene. Ryanusuk. Yes. We've come this far, but now, now you're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a vital piece of evidence, it's true. So if there are any clues left for us to use now, they must be in your head. In my head. You told me before your, that your powers of observation were one of the things you could really depend on. Well, yes, that's true, but... But I didn't manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. So think back now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, Every smell. What I saw, what I felt. Every color. Oh, there's blood. It's Kazuma, right? Somewhere in the vibrant memory of this same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? There's a clue. Actually, Kazuma, I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Ah, you always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Ryan Usuk? Come on, man. Let's, swi let's wipe the smug smile off that English woman's face with some evidence. All right. I can't wait. It's been nig niggling me for a while that something feels amiss in, the, in my memories of that day. Whatever it is could be the key... To arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere that the that the clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's real killer must have been is. Oh, I thought I could pick that blood.
that. Inspector Hasanaga, answer me this. Yes, what is it? Uh, he's still miles away. Probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you've said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely. I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything from the scene of the crime. Anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took into the victim's table that day. That you took to the victim's table that day. Objection! Wait a minute. Where are you going? Where are you going with this little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the scene shown in the photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate that the steak was served on was a spattering of blood. What? Oh, really? And what of it? Obviously, that must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Take a good look at the photograph and the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, there's no way that that blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. Ah. Hmm, yes. For blood to have made it onto the plate, it implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter. Which means the shooter must have been sitting opposite the professor as you were. Jaziel Brett. I beg your pardon. Objection! This is beyond ridiculous, fabricated nonsense. Is the court seriously expected to believe something the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? Hold it! This. This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Inspector, you mean? Yes, I took the plate in the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it, neat and all, and I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief because of it. You did what? I took the steak that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak that the sergeant had been eating. The sergeant had been eating? And I did it all in the name of justice. Then we can find out for sure whether or not there is a blood stain on Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Inspector. The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Sorry for the delay. Here is what you ordered, the steak. Well, what about the blood? Is there blood on it? Of course there isn't. Quickly, Inspector, the blood man. Show the court. Of course, examine the plate at your leisure.
No, no blood. No blood anywhere. But no. Impossible. I know I saw it. I'm sure of it. It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. Ha ha ha. What an unbecoming expression, little boy. You see, this is why I always say you can't trust what you the Japanese tell you. Ugh. Tisk, I couldn't agree more. In the case of this disgrace to the Empire. I believe we may finally have reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This this let's pretend attempt at the courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. Ha, ah, this sorry looking steak reveals the facts all too clearly. If the sorry looking accused wishes to examine it again, be my guest. The plate of steak has been entered into the court record. Was the plate I saw, or thought I saw, just a figment of my imagination? This is it now, I've lost. Ryanusu. It's not over yet, not until the final gavel. Hmm. Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward no matter what. Believe in myself? Really? Hmm, maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. As the evidence requested by the defense has not been shown to be problematic in any way, I presume any further examination of this evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objection? That bloodstain was going to clinch the trial for. Can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? There's another clue. Your Excellency, please wait. This plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that will reveal the shocking truth. Attention! The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beefsteak. Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn my blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I am completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel for the defense, you will now clearly show the court to what you are alluding. Where precisely on this plate of beefsteak is this new clue to be found? Wow, there's something under it. Wow. Huh. What the... What is... What in the world is this? I think... It's a Coban coin, and the hallmark is from the Hoi era, I believe. No, no, I don't mean what is it. I mean, what's it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a Hoi Coban? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be in good condition. I imagine it's very valuable. Hmm, this isn't the first time today that there's been talk of a Hoi Coban. 
I've heard of pearls before swine, but I've never heard of bullion and bullion. Bullion. And I don't think you've ever will, will again. This is extraordinary though. This means Good, good gracious, that's a Coban. What on earth? A Hoy era one at that. Miss Brett, this is in fact the beefsteak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me. Why is it that there's an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? Shut up! What a gracious, what a ridiculous question. How should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life. I don't know what it is or what this is, but I want no part of it. Attention! I failed to see how this is relevant. A coin under the meat. That could simply have been a careless mistake by the chef in a moment of distraction. Objection! Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe that this happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare hoy coban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll rip up my ticket to go to Great Britain right now. He's right, it can't be a coincidence. Your Excellency. Yes, Council. A rare Hoi Caban just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of steak. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. Attention! By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. Perhaps, little boy, you should realize that this is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here. The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if he can explain what it's doing under the stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There's only one person it can belong to. The owner of the Coban that was found underneath this beefsteak is... Huh. This one is going to stump me. How would I know who the owner of the coin is? Oh, I do. It's the... Uh, it's the old guy that does antiques. Take that! Obviously, it can only be the antiques dealer and owner of Rasute Cairio. Korakuru san. Kiri? Kairi? As in Mr. Cucumber or something? Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. Ah, yes. The old man who testified earlier alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his Coban coin when he it happened. At exactly the moment the gun was fired. The gunshot interests me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for treasure. Indeed, the Hoy era Coban. My prize coin. 
Then this Hoi Iriko band. Do you do you mean to tell me? Attention! No, no, no. Please, why would Kirita San's Goban be sandwiched between the victim's beefsteak and its plate? It makes no sense. Yes! Which is why I'm asking to bring Korakuda San back to the witness stand so we can ask him. Officer, bring both witnesses that testified earlier back here, in here. Without a moment's delay. I can't believe we've come back to round to the, that paragon. I can't believe we've come back round to that paragon. Yeah, that's not great. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch that if we chase down the real significance of this Coban, we'll find that it's a key element in the case. What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Don't you realize that it's dinner time for a little baby? Aido? When my son's belly is empty, he's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Huh, look at the little kid. It's his booger. That's funny, it's his booger. Huh. Uh. Took a picture of it. Exploited by the police, we were, like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a trice. A worthless, withered antique. Nothing more I, yeah, nothing more I have I to say. The sun has set on this Rasuti shop owner's existence. Be that as it may, Korakuda san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasu Te meant. What? That's, yes, that's it. The one. The very one. The very exact one, that is. The resplendent, splendorous Hoi treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. It can't be. Hmm, as I thought. Young man, enlighten this decrepit old fool. Put me out of my misery. Where, where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwiched between a beefsteak and its plate soaking in the seasoned meat juice, meat's juices. Sandwiched. Soaking. Seriously? Clearly it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody concealed my Hawaii treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate? Who could do such a thing? Such a inconceivable Inconscionable thing. Excuse me. Could I say something? Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Sonaga. I mentioned this earlier on in the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnival is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. 
Recently, there's been a, a run in similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm. Wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in undercover, is it? Yes, I took the job of a waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Coban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm, so unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid the Karakuru Sans Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defensive view on this matter. Tell us, who is the despicable scoundrel that stole Kirikuta San's Koban and hid it under the stake? Hmm. doesn't really tell you like it's basically a guess Take that! I probably got it wrong yes it seems like the like a likely candidate for a Coban thief no come on Ryan Nusuk Huh. You shocked me, Kazuma. Not as much as you shocked me. No one could have approached the table unnoticed. Even if you're a crazy fool, you couldn't have missed that. She was at the table. I'm not sure you should be calling Korakuru-san a crazy fool, Kazuma. It's you I was calling the f crazy fool. Ah, maybe I'm not, a, maybe I'm on the wrong track here. I don't believe I can have heard you correctly. Counsel, let me hear your opinion on this matter again. Man. They don't really give you a clue.
that. Obviously, it can only be you. Sergeant Aisa Nosa. What? How? How dare you, 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 you monster. Monster? I stole that Coban, did I? I'm the master thief of La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, Cadet? But it wasn't me, it was Aido. Aido is the mastermind behind all this. Damn, I got it wrong again. You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an innocent little baby. It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. You. Oh, wow. Clippery clop, clippity clop, clippity clop. Gah. Nippon Imperial Army, Sergeant Aisa Nosa, preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. Do any of you know of the extraordinary low wages that Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporarily increased in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place. And I have heard it's hard for lower ranking soldiers to make a living, yes? All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? The place is heavy with money. Every three days, I go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. Sounds like he doesn't bother with a knife or fork, even, which is worrying, which is worryingly unbelievable. And your target that day was the old man and his Coban? Yes, sir. He was an easy mark. I slipped a coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm. A veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the stake I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Bang. Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I ate 02. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could on the double. I slipped it under the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there is no need to detain you at any longer at all. May the esteemed gentlewoman please be excused, Your Excellency. Hmm, indeed. The theft of the Coban was clearly perpetrated by this baby-saddled sergeant. It would clearly, it would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat 
The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. <clears throat> nonsense, is it? Uh, um, well, of... And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork? It's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered. I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. And good day. Ryanusu, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got to me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly. But something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry? You can think later, but if you don't call him out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett. What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time, there's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! What new student nonsense is this? Well, what party words are you talking about, Ryan Usuk? Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as far as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork? They said it's his steak. It's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What is she said expose an undeniable contradiction? I'm going to need to see evidence, counsel. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? Oh, I thought it was gonna be a statement. coin under a lump of meat the sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me and as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork oh okay I gotta see if there's a knife and fork there's a fork right there so let me do this one This is the evidence right here. Well, well, Miss Brett, this attempt to incriminate me is as brutish as the sergeant's eating habits. Yes, I'm inclined to agree. What? You are really in need to learn some gentleman habits, little boy. I'll do my best. I need to think of it. Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryan Usuk? What the heck? Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. 
The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounded me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife or fork. It's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. Hmm. Going to need to see some evidence, Council. Well, here. It's not this. Just pick this. See, I thought for sure they're gonna say, because he said without a knife or fork in the statement, and there's a fork right there. But it's not that one. Wait a minute, it's this one. It's this one. That shows both of them. Take that! Knife and fork. The photographic print of the scene take, taken immediately after this incident occurred. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed, yes. Go on. More accurately, Your Ex Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just spittling, splitting hairs. Not true. Doesn't something about this steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What's, what on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. I see you have no you've noticed it too, Miss Brown. Notice what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no Englishman could even contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife or fork. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. Then take a good look at this steak, in particular the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clear identified or clearly defined barbaric teeth marks here. Ah. Ah. It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife or fork, there should shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Attention! What is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously hungry. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will be all over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rookie in his place. I've heard enough. Your irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Of course, of course, dear lady. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have you have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She realized that the catastrophic implication these teeth marks in the stake have for her. Ryan Usu, do you know where you're going with this? 
Yes, now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks and the steak that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reasons why the blood stain I know I some saw somehow seems to have disappeared. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks and the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, Counsel. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks and the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard this today? You wouldn't know the meaning of that phrase. Typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence doesn't exist. Attention! That, this is absurd. The trial has run several hours already, and you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward. There can't be. I don't believe you have it. Objection! I don't, but there is someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I am referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well, I have a feeling this will be my last request for the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? Counsel, I'm disappointed, as this is likely your last chance. Would have expected you to be taking it more seriously. Ah, what? Seems you need some waking up. Perhaps a penalty will focus your mind. Hmm, who could it be? Now we have come this far, there's nothing more to say. There's one more person in particular who's provided us with the various pieces of evidence already. Ah, one person that's provided us with pieces of evidence already. You have plenty of clues that point to the right answer. This is the last act in this trial, and you have center stage, Ryan Yusuk. Hmm, who could it be? Very well, I have a feeling this will be my last request of this defense in trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? It's gotta be him. Take that! He's the only one that presented a bunch of evidence. The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Husanaga. What? I have it? Yes. You, you think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's ridiculous. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. 
I'd enjoy chopping my way through a good steak. And as well as admitting to stealing the Karukuda-san's coin, he told us that he slipped it under the steak. You, you watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under, in fact, your own stake? Teen Shun. Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still. I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as of evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. Attention! But that makes no sense. That plate was taken from the victim's table. Attention! Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her stake, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course, I didn't steal it. To even suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly. Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over. Two stakes? You did switch the plates. Well, after it happened, the, um, bang. When I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I, I immediately lifted my stake and hid the coin underneath it. But then when the waiter announced that he was an undercover policeman, I thought I, I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my, my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken to the kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision, precision and timing, I switched my stake with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't. I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Unbelievable. However, fear not, Prosecutor San. What now? I swear on the brass buttons in my uniform, that is all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes! So, if Sergeant Nosa switched the plates over... It means he took Miss Brett's steak and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Asanaga. Yes. Earlier in this trial, you told me that you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's steak after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That's to preserve evidence. You had taken both. Ah. That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. What can that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat, it can't have the slightest bearing on the case. Objection! 
No, you're not wriggling your way out of this time, lady. I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? Hmm, you're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something the defendants remember seeing. Tisk thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear spattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett? Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and the plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. Here is the other steak and its plate. Please feel free to examine it. The blood stain. It's clearly visible, look. Yes! Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Nurhuru-san to have shot the victim. Ah, it, it can't be. In fact, there's only one person who could have possibly had shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everybody knows by now who that person is. Ugh, um... That's right, Miss Jazeel Brett. It's you. Huh, the goose. Outdone by a Japanese me? By a Japanese schoolboy? No, no, no. Birdies all over. What's up with that? Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior from an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what exactly happened that day, the truth this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was, it was I who took the professor's life using a curator. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you planned to kill the professor knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water? Because curare is unheard of in here in Japan? Yes, of course. I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. 
I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water and it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone. And I leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over and greet the professor... ...meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at this point. So I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happened to know that the professors always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Curare in my handbag and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Under your skirt? So I was right, there were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably be placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up, bang. That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a com commotion at which the point of the waiter appeared. At which point the waiter appeared. At which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assume Norhudu San was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and the locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor and his chair around. Because of course, you needed to make it look like the defendants had shot Dr. Wilson from where he'd picked the gun up. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Misdemeanor? Your Excellency. Yes. I wonder, might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me. Norhudu san. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This, this can't be. Takatushi Auchi does not lose. Not to do the likes of this, this rookie student. You better start getting used to tough opposition. Arr, Ryunusuk Norhu. What? Yes. This insult to Auchi family name will never be forgotten. 
you become conceited with age, Council, but the old have, have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the only way of the world. May you never forget that. A thousand millennia may pass, and still the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Norahudu clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of the new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryanusuk Norahudu, presented an excellent case. Thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern me methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of, in, of justice. A new future of law awaits. But what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. That is it for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asogi? Yes. After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustri illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why did you look so grave all of a sudden? Ah, never mind. As for you, Ryanusuk Norhudu. Oh, yes. And you, I sense, how can I put it? Unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryanusuk Norahudu, not guilty. Yay. Nice. This court is now adjourned. November 22nd, 246 p.m., Supreme Court of Judicature, Defendant's Antichamber 5. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Ryanusu, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. Ha 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 ha. No, no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So you owe me an extra large sukuyaki from the place on Yubi University Street. Don't forget it. Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Congratulations to both of you for proving Nurehuru san's innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do anything. Thank you so much. If we hadn't had the research report of Miss Bretts, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind of words should really be for my father. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as she asked. As he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your father? Ah, uh, yes, of course. 
forgive me for introducing on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Sasato Mikotoba, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Speaking of Mikotoba, ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Nurahudu, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you after all. Your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Union University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn. Asogi. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world in science, medicine, and engineering culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll learn all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of Asogi clan. clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Jazeel Brett, I mean. After all this, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Jazeel Brat will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. It's a matter of consul consular jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Inspector Osanaga. It was a hard fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congratulate. But what? What's all this about consular, consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then who, who's going to bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case somewhere far away where, her voice, where our voices can't be heard. But why a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the new friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Then so long as this is not a serious incident of highly political nature to our respective governments, they can invoke a consular court just like that. Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student, today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of competent come come up and for her i don't believe it the british government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that 
We hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make it change. This is a time of great turmoil, this new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day I have no doubt that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor, you're right, this is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Ryan Usuk's not guilty break. Let's start having some fun. In that case, might I suggest La Carnival? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with the ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hosan Hassan, aren't you? Uh-huh. Wonder why he's bleeding in the mouth. Let's not worry about details from now on. Let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnival, will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnival's food is the second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Norhunu San's release. Oh, yes, thank you. So Jazeel Brat won't be tried here. I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma? Yes, Ryanusuk. I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. Ha 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 ha. I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made the difference, though. One day, I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during the trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it, for being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat, I never want to go through that ever again. I just, I did what you told me, that's all, because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry, what do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Ryan Yusuf, do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs to order to win? In order to win? Um, knowledge of the law. No, the ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it? I'm human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make the choice about what to believe and then stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you choose to believe in, <clears throat> even then, well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Believing in your client. Just to look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little ex real experience, but you never stop believing in me. Well, I, you face seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you'll never, you never stopped looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it through your own efforts and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. Boy, this really keeps going on. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryan Usuk. 
Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is it? You're still here, are you? Ah, you're still here, are you? Oh, Inspector Usanaga. I have arranged for some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. We'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. Thank God. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes, that too. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikitoba. Sasato-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hasanaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. It was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through that trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. The End Two different games, I believe. So there's five episodes in each one. Episode two. Should label this episode. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that like and subscribe if you like what you saw. Thanks a lot. Have a good night, everybody.